verses 1 and 2, going back to the very beginning. It says, In the, very, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, I have to only imagine that you all know this verse. There are so many people that try to read through the Bible in one year that many people, I have to imagine, have stopped pretty quickly after this verse because it gets rather boring in their opinion. But this is something that's preached about. This verse has to have been mentioned at least once in a pulpit that you've heard, and it has to possibly do with the power of God to create everything that we know. In this chapter of Genesis, it says, uh, we read the phrase, then God said, and we read this seven times, demonstrating God's power and how great he is. Now I bring this up because when it comes to sin, it literally takes an act of God to remove it. You see, I have gone to public school. Not necessarily proud of that, not necessarily ashamed of it, but I have gone to public school and I have heard all the evolutional doctrine that I can hear at this point. That was never the problem. The doctrinal issue was never a problem for me. Rather, I saw this as an example of God's power, that he could do things in a second that would have taken billions of years, according to man. My point is, as I said, God is all-powerful. He created everything that we know, but yet it took the Godhead splitting up it took Jesus coming to earth, but not only that, it took God being there for him and for us. And it took the Holy Spirit <clears throat> inspiring the apostles to write the Gospels. And John 16, 12 through 14, we read, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not seek his own authority. Excuse me. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Jesus is here referring to the Holy Spirit. It took all three parts of the Godhead in order for us to have an opportunity to be saved. And I find it interesting to me that people that know they're wrong, people that know that they're in sin, make excuses such as it's hard. Or that I want to be a Christian, but it's complicated. Jesus, carrying all of our sins, and carrying the cross that would later kill him, walked a very long distance to the place where he was. I have to imagine that that was very hard. And it's definitely harder than what you have to do. And it's not that complicated. Because the Godhead, God, did what he, what he needed to for us to be saved. And if we all can be saved, then it's not that complicated. He did the hard part for us. He did the complicated part for us. We don't have to think. Rather, we have to obey. Jesus paid for you with his blood. And my final point here, I want to think on this for just a second. He paid for you with his blood. And to deny him what he has paid for is cheating. To deny him what he has paid for in full and ahead. To make excuses such as it's complicated or it's too hard is not going to be acceptable. Finally, I want to say this. Jesus bore your sins and mine. And in all reality, without that, we would have no chance. And because of him, we need to accept it. Whether it's complicated or hard, it should not be up to us.